OK, it's product review time. And today, we've got something quite exciting. We are reviewing the Blue Boo S1 smartphone. Now, before we start, I should mention this is a sponsored review. This product came to me free of charge from Gearbest. There will be a link to the product in the description, which will be my affiliate link. I want you to know, however, about sponsored reviews. I only accept sponsored reviews on the understanding that I can be objective, and if I don't like something about the device, I can say so. So anyway, let's get started unboxing it. So the first thing to say is the packaging is actually rather unusual and nice. It comes in a flat square box, which has a kind of almost velvety feel to it. Now, that doesn't matter an awful lot to me, because the box is something I put away and never use again. But I know that some people do actually find this quite important. So let's open it up and see what we've got inside. So we've got the phone in a little carrier bit there. We'll have a look at that in a moment. We've got a box here. All of these boxes have got a sort of velvety, soft touch feel to them. We've got a warranty card. Small instruction manual. Uh, instructions for what I think is either a tempered glass or tough plastic screen. It's a rigid screen protector. I don't know if that's tempered glass or if that's just plastic. The edges make it look a little bit like that might be acrylic or something actually, but I don't know. I'm not very familiar with these things. And a kind of semi-soft silicone case. It actually feels quite nice. That's something I would possibly use cases, if they're too bulky or if they if they cover up the appearance of the phone, are often not an option for me, but that one I don't mind too much. And then we've got this box which contains ah, now a USB-C to jack plug. That's interesting. I guess that's going to mean something. Oh, and there's also a little SIM tray ejector there. We've got a USB-C cable and a small mains adapter which won't work in my region but that doesn't matter because it's only USB and I have plenty of those. So let's take a look at the phone itself. Okay, comes with a slide off protection sleeve there. Okay, it's interesting. So the phone is <laughs> fingerprint magnet, as you can see already. Sort of piano black on the back here. I don't know whether that's glass. It feels like maybe it is. And glossy black on the front. Let's have a look around the device and see what we've got. So on the right hand side, we've got power and volume rocker. On the top, nothing at all. On the left hand side, just a SIM tray. And on the bottom, just some speakers and the USB-C. So there's no headphone jack, which will be why we've got this little adapter here. So for this phone, you'll need to use a Bluetooth headset or Bluetooth headphones, or you'll need to use the little USB-C to jack plug adapter. So on the back here, so on the back here, we can see the dual rear cameras. Now flush fitted and it's just an ever so slightly perceptible junction between the case and the glass covering the cameras but that is flush. The camera glass appears to have an anti-reflective coating on top of it which looks interesting. I'm hoping that might improve the quality of photography especially in challenging light conditions. And then we've got the dual tone flash there, which is again flush, set just below the back case of the phone. Oh, and down here on the front, 
we've got the front camera at the bottom. Now this is because this is a kind of bezel-less or minimal bezel phone. We'll have a look at that more in a moment. So the front camera has to be down at the bottom here, which is a bit unusual, but it's becoming more common. And so in order to use it in selfie mode, you have to turn the phone upside down. I think we're going to see more and more of that. And so it's, uh, it's an inconvenience the first time you encounter it, but it's going to be one of those things that I think people just get used to if you've got a phone that's nearly all screen. So it's an interesting slab of a phone. It's a bit reminiscent of the Doogee Mix that I re reviewed quite recently. So let's have a look and compare them side by side. So there's the Doogee Mix alongside the Blue Boo S1. And they are superficially actually quite similar, aren't they? Almost identical size, screen almost identical size, fingerprint button in the same place, front camera in the same place, rear cameras quite similar layout, although dual flash on the Blue Blue S1, only single flash on there. There's a camera bump on the Doogee Mix, but that is because the Doogee Mix is thinner than the Blue Blue S1 by just about the thickness of that camera bump. Anyway, we're not going to talk too much about the Doogee Mix in this video. There'll be another one to follow up and wrap up what we found out about that shortly. Let's get on and get this started up. Okay, so it's gone straight into the operating system. So that's interesting. There was no setup. There was no nonsense going through screens and so on. It's just gone straight into the setup mode. Now, interestingly, they've given it a black background here. The screen is nice and bright. I believe this is an IPS screen and it's 1080p. So it's full HD. Now, it is interesting to me that they've given this a black background because I think we're going to find that like the uh, like the Doogee Mix, it's not quite as bezel-less as the advertising images show. So no, we've got a it's not really tri bezel-less. Let's have a look at that. It's got a lovely big screen to body ratio, but it's not as bezel-less as the advertising images tell you. So there's a probably a four millimeter bezel at the top there. Well, if we, if we count bezel from edge of screen to edge of body, there is four millimeters there at the top and possibly three millimeters at the side. Again, really, really similar amount of screen to body ratio to the Doogee Mix. So let's just have a little look around and see what it's like to use. So it's got that little thing on the screen there that gives you a wheel that gives you various functions that you quick got quick access to. Um, the interface seems nice and responsive. So let's have a look and see how do we get? I'm just finding my way around here, really. Um, oh, I see. So the menu is the little control buttons are there. So I would say it feels pretty much the same as the Doogee Mix in terms of any slight lag or anything like that. Uh, let's see if we can get into the settings app or the all apps list. System Manager, Power Man. Okay, so this I'm uh, going to have to spend a little while finding my way around this implementation of Android. So what else can we say about this phone right here? So spec-wise, it's got four gig of RAM. It's sixty-four gig of ROM. It's got a P twenty-five octa-core processor, same as the Doogee Mix. It's got a Gorilla Glass screen, but it's only Gorilla Glass 4, so that is going to be slightly prone to scratching from keys or coins that might be in your pocket or grit. But the screen is full HD, so 1080p screen, IPS screen rather than OLED, so not quite as saturated as some of the OLED screens we've seen, but actually still looks rather nice and colourful. Yep, so I'm going to have to spend a little while finding my way around this phone. And then I'll come back and we'll talk about first impressions. I am going to give the camera quite a good test because that is quite an important feature to me on a smartphone.
Okay, so initial impressions of the Blue Boot S1. It looks really nice. It's a nice rectilinear slab of a phone. It's a bit more square than the Doogee Mix 5.5. It's not as heavy as the Doogee Mix. So it feels a little bit more comfortable in the hand. It doesn't feel like it's going to slip out of my hand quite so much as the other phone did. Fingerprint unlock. I'm having some of the same problems here as I had initially with the Doogee. So fingerprint lock is just a little bit iffy sometimes, but it does actually get there. The screen is nice and pretty, not as saturated as an OLED screen would be, but you can see some really fine detail there on things like that fine writing there. So it's a 1080p screen, so it's actually got really, really good resolution. Camera I've had a little test of. Photography quality seems reasonably good. Actually, it seems possible to take quite good photos with this. St still photos, certainly no problems at all. Video, I've had the same problem I'm having with other phones at the moment, which is that the autofocus just seems to hunt all the time. And the amount of control that you have over the way that the video camera actually functions is pretty limited. This is actually exactly the same camera app as the Doogee Mix. And so the autofocus is continuous, but it's hunting all the time. You can actually see it doing that and it pretty much spoils the video footage that you take with it. And there doesn't appear to be any way to lock focus. So there's actually very little in the way of configurable um, behavior. The camera as, by default makes stupid noises, which I don't like, but I'm sure those can be turned off. But yeah, there are, actually aren't very many options here. So yeah, there isn't any option to lock the focus or lock the exposure or do anything like that with the video camera. So yes, the second camera is definitely being used for that blur mode. We've got a pro mode on for still cameras and we can adjust things like brightness, ISO, white balance, for a variety of settings, but focusing is still done by touching the screen. I'm not sure how we collapse those options actually. I'm not even sure that we can. So yeah, the, the camera app leaves a bit to be desired really. So let's just watch a video on here so we get an idea of what the screen and the audio quality is like. Okay, I'm going to say that at maximum volume there, the audio quality, the audio volume is just a little bit lower than you really probably want. The quality sounds okay. I guess, I guess it's a tiny bit on the tinny side, but the volume there is pretty poor. So anyway, so I think that's about all we can say about the Blue Boo S1 for now. It seems like the build quality of the thing is fairly good. I like the fact that it has USB-C because that's just easier to plug in and actually the file transfer rate when I took some photos and video off of here was so much quicker than it has been on other phones where I've only got micro USB. I think it would only be fair for me to try this phone out for a week now and I'll report back at the end of this week with my perceptions on how it performs as a phone, how it's what it's like for web browsing, checking my emails, taking photos and, and so on. Initial impressions, not bad. This phone didn't make massively grandiose claims about the quality of the camera, so I'm afraid I, I can't set my hopes as high as I might have done for other models in the past. But uh, we'll we'll try this out for a week and we'll see how it performs. 
Uh, battery life is another thing we'll check. So there we go. If you're interested in buying this phone, there's a link in the video description. It is an affiliate link, so I make a small amount of money out of that if you click through and buy. So uh, just in the interests of full disclosure, it's a pretty phone. It's nice and shiny, and it's a fantastic fingerprint magnet. So there we go. That is the Blue Boo S1. Quite a nice looking phone, and I'll report back in a week about how it performs and what it's like to use. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.